Welcome to this week's assembly. Today's story is exciting. It's a great story. I hope you enjoy it. Once upon a time, about 2,800 years ago, lived a man in Israel called Jonah. He was a prophet, which means he went around telling people about God, telling people how God wanted them to live and teaching people about God. One day, God told Noah to go to Nineveh and tell the people there that they've been living really bad lives and God wanted them to change to start living good lives. Now, Nineveh had a population of about 120,000. That's about seven times as many people as there is in Carterton. But Jonah didn't want to go because Nineveh was the capital of Assyria, which was Israel's arch enemy. Nineveh was that way, so Jonah went that way. He went in the opposite direction. He got onto a boat, paid the captain to take him further away from Nineveh. So Jonah got onto the boat, went down to the hold and fell asleep. Once the boat was out into the sea, a great big storm blew up. Heavy rain, big winds and the boat was being blown around. And the captain and the crew were frightened because they thought the boat might capsize. It might turn over and they might all be drowned. When the captain found Jonah was asleep, he woke him up and said, how can you be sleeping like a in a time like this? So the captain and the crew rowed and rowed as hard as they could, but the storm got worse. And then they decided it was someone's fault. So they cast lots. Now what that means is they have pieces of wood of different lengths and they each picked a piece of wood. I've got some pencils here. It's a long piece. A long piece. But Jonah, when it was his turn, oh, he picked the short one. So it was his fault they decided. So the captain said, who are you? Where do you come from? And what God do you worship? And Jonah told them the whole story of how he was running away from God because he didn't want to go to Nineveh. And that um, that was why there was this storm. Jonah said, throw me overboard and then the storm will stop. But the captain and the crew kept rowing. They wanted to save Jonah, but the storm got worse. And so they threw him overboard. One, two, three. And they watched as Jonah was drowning. And then something amazing happened. God sent a massive fish. We don't know what it was. It might have been a whale, but a massive fish and the fish swallowed him up. And there was Jonah inside the belly of a great big fish. Just think for a moment what that would have been like. It would have been dark. It would have been very smelly down in the fish's belly. And there'd have been things floating around, wouldn't there, in the, in, the, in the belly. It would have been an awful time, I think. But God had a plan. And inside the fish's belly, Jonah prayed. He said sorry to God for not going to Nineveh. And he said that he would go. Three days Jonah was in the belly of the whale and then suddenly the whale went up to the shore or the big fish, we don't know what it was, and spat Jonah out onto the shore. Jonah got up, he probably smelled, he probably needed a wash, but he went to Nineveh. And when he got there, he started walking through the city telling people God's message. And the message was, stop being bad and start being good, because if you don't, God will destroy this city in 40 days time. And up and down the city he walked, telling the people this message. Do you think the people believed him? Well, they did. And they started saying sorry. And they started 
to be good instead of being bad. And even the king believed Jonah's message and made a rule that everyone had to stop being bad and start being good. So when Jonah finished his preaching, he went up the hill that overlooked Nineveh and waited to see what would happen. And when God didn't destroy the city, how do you think Jonah felt? He was angry and he moaned at God saying, I knew if I went to Nineveh, people would change and you wouldn't destroy them. And he sat up that hill like this. Perhaps you can pull a grumpy face for me, an angry, grumpy face. And he sat there and he sulked as he looked at the city. It was very hot and the sun was burning Jonah's head. But he didn't care. He was quite depressed. He said he wanted to die and he was angry. But that night, God caused a plant to grow up with great big leaves. And so the next day, Jonah was able to sit in the shade of the tree and his head was cool. And so he was quite pleased about that. But the next night when he went to sleep, God made the tree wither and die. So the next morning when Jonah woke up, there was no shade and he was angry again. And he moaned at God about destroying his tree and off he went off on one. And then God said to him, Jonah, you've been angry and upset about one plant, the plant that grew in a day and then died. But you didn't plant it. You didn't make it grow. And you felt sad and upset about that. And then God said to him, so think about the city of Nineveh. There's over 100,000 people there, including children. And there's also lots of animals. Think how much I care about that city, much more than you care about this plant. And that is the end of the story and we don't know what happened to Jonah after that. Be interesting to find out wouldn't it but we don't know there's no records. I hope that Jonah was sorry for his behaviour really and was pleased that Nineveh wasn't destroyed and that people started being good. So Jonah hopefully learned that God loves all men and women, boys and girls, no matter where we live or where we're from. He loves every every person from every country. And we also learn from that that God would like us to stop be, doing bad things and start being good things. Now, before we've, had, we've got our quiz, I've got one or two thoughts to share with you about that. And I wonder where the most unusual place you have ever prayed. Where were you when you prayed that was an unusual place? Well, I've never prayed when I was inside a big fish. I've never been inside a big fish. But there might be some unusual places that I prayed in. Jonah was full of emotions, wasn't he? He was angry, he was scared, he was sad, he was depressed, he was hopeful, he was happy sometimes. But he never talked about how he felt. And I think that's a lesson. I think we should talk to people about how we feel. Talk to a trusted adult if you feel angry or sad or lonely or depressed. And also, if you're happy, it's good to share when you feel happy. Perhaps the most important thing we can learn from that story is that God loves everyone everywhere. And one other thing, Jonah ran away from the thing that he was scared of and the thing that he didn't want to do. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. And it was going to be hard. And so he went the other way. And I was wondering if you could think if there's anything that you don't want to do that you know that you should. Or if there's anything that you know is going to be really difficult, but you need to do it. 
If there is, let's not be like Jonah and run away and avoid it. Let's try our best and go towards it because you can do it. And we can learn things when we face hard challenges. Before I quiz, I'd like to pray for you and for me just for a few seconds. Think about that thing that you know you've got to do that might be difficult or you don't want to do, but you know you've got to do it. And I'm going to pray for us. Dear God, thank you that you love everyone everywhere. And I pray for all of us. And I pray for the thing that we know we've got to do, but we're a bit nervous about. We know it's going to be difficult. Maybe we don't want to do it. Help us to face it and to do it, to learn from it and to be able to get there in the end. Amen. Amen. OK, let's have a go at the quiz then. Eight questions this week. Number one. What did God want Jonah to do in Nineveh? What was God's challenge to Jonah? What did God want him to do? Number two. But what did Jonah do? At the start of the story. Number three. When Jonah got into the boat, he went to sleep. And what happened? And number four, when Jonah was thrown into the sea, what happened to him? Number five, when Jonah was inside the great big fish, what did he do? Number six, how many days was Jonah in the fish? Number seven, when Jonah got to Nineveh and he preached and told the people to stop being bad and start being good, what did the people do? And finally, number eight, what message did God try to teach Jonah when the plant died? OK, here are the answers. Some of those are tricky. Hopefully you've got on well. Number one, God wanted Jonah to tell the people to stop being bad, start being good. Or you could just say to tell people to live good lives. Number two, what did Jonah do? He ran away. He went the other way. Number three, Jonah was asleep. And when he was asleep, what happened? There was a big storm, wasn't there? Number four, when they threw Jonah into the sea, what happened to him? A big fish ate him or swallowed him. Five, what did Jonah do inside the fish? He said sorry to God. He prayed. He prayed. You could just put he prayed is fine. He said sorry to God. Number six, he was in the fish three days. And number seven, what happened when Jonah preached in Nineveh? The people stopped being bad and started being good. Or you could say they listened to his, his message. And number eight, what message did God try and teach Jonah about the plant? Really that God loves everyone and cares for everyone. Jonah cared for the plant, but he didn't care for the people, did he? But God was saying, you care for that plant, one plant. How much more do I care for all the people? OK, I hope you like that story and uh, I hope to see you all soon. Bye. Bye.